It is a real honor to be here. And, uh, you know, as Katie mentioned, in India, there really isn't a concept of professional elder care. And it's very exciting for me to be in the U.S. And I come here about, you know, once every six months or so to really get back in touch with all the very exciting and interesting technology, care practices, uh, social norms, et cetera, that exist here. So thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Um, Maybe I can introduce myself very briefly. Uh, my name is Kabir Chada. I actually went to school uh, at Stanford, very nearby. Um, worked at McKinsey and Company thereafter for three, four years before deciding that it was getting a little too claustrophobic for me. Uh, and I quit, moved to Delhi, and moved in with my nani, which means uh, maternal grandmother in uh, Hindi. Um, and uh, she has been an inspiration to me for several years. And as a family, we had a lot of trouble caring for her, um, and I think someone earlier had mentioned that, uh, you know, elder care is a space where uh, really a lot of personal stories drive the passion in you, and that definitely is the case with me. Um, Epoch Elder Care uh, is an organization that I founded in March of 2013. We had our first, uh, 2012, sorry. We had our first real customer in January of 2012. Um, and I'd like to spend the next maybe like three minutes that I have walking you through what exactly we do and why we do it. So uh, broadly, we aim to be India's leading elder care organization, both in terms of revenue as well as the quality of care that we provide. Our goal is really to fill the gap between what the caregiver, the adult child, is looking for and what the market offers, which is not a whole lot. And we estimate that the professional, well, premium at-home elder care market in India is greater than $1.5 billion, and I can talk to you about how we do that as well. But very basically, our end user, or the elderly person that we care for, uh, is someone who is lonely, unoccupied, and socially disconnected. Often they're suffering from different ailments like dementia, Parkinson's, immobility, etc. They struggle to care for their own health, and they also struggle to manage their own household needs. On the flip side, you have their adult child, um, you know, an Indian person between the ages of 40 to 60, uh, who very much feels guilty that they're not doing enough for their elderly parents. Uh, India is still a place where it is your responsibility to care for your elders. However, they find trapped in a world where they're busy with their own lives, their work, their children, their travel, and so on. They feel like you know, domestic help, friends, neighbors, really not enough and they don't want to rely on it. And uh, they really have nowhere to turn. Um, there's no real offering in the market for them today. And that's really where we come in. And I'll, I'll walk you through exactly what we do. But before that, uh, I think some, uh, it was mentioned earlier that it's important to have a big market. And what's really exciting about India is the market is really huge and untapped. Um, if you look here, uh, as of 2011, there were almost 100 million people above the age of 60. If you eliminate everyone who's younger than 80 and just look at the 80 plus population for argument's sake, um, there are 10 million people who are 80 plus. Uh, if you then elim eliminate everyone who is in a rural setting and look at people who are 80 plus and urban, you have 2.4 million. And then if you eliminate everyone who you know, doesn't have someone who can out of pocket pay for care, you're left with around 600,000 folks. And if you bring, you know, you can multiply that by four if you change your uh, age to be 70 plus. Uh, Epoch Elder Care, by the way, has been around for almost about a year. And we noticed that the average revenue that we get per customer per month is around $210. And you do some simple math, uh, and assuming that revenue per customer doesn't increase, which it will, um, you know, you get to a market size of definitely higher than $1.5 billion. And what's really exciting is that all the indicators are in the right direction here. We have a large and growing elderly population. People who are 80 plus, the, the 10 million that we talked about is going to double in 2026. Families are beginning to become ready for professional help in their own household. It used to be a real taboo 10 years ago. There's a large talent pool of caregivers. And this is professional caregivers. Um, you know, India is really competing for engineering talent or... Um, you know, business talent or sales talent, but really no one has uh, taken advantage of the huge pool of well-educated, well-communicating caregivers that are out there. Uh, the joint family system where you used to have 10, 20 people under one household providing this kind of care for their elders 
uh, in the same home is breaking apart and now you're finding more and more nuclear families, uh, especially in the high income and urban settings. There are no big players who dominate this market. Most of the healthcare providers in India uh, are like hospital giants who care about you know, bed turnover. Um, and finally, senior living, uh, there really isn't that much of a supply of good quality senior living out there for high income elders. Uh, and there's still a little bit of taboo that is attached to it that I'm sure will dissipate over the next decade or two. So what we have done with uh, a shoestring budget uh, in the last one year is put together uh, an offering that, is, that really helps uh, care for the elderly person and give their adult child peace of mind. Uh, there are three current offerings that we provide. One is intellectual companionship, where our elder care specialists who visit the homes of the elders help the elders stay active and occupied, remain socially connected, take them on an outing for a coffee, a movie, um, help them learn technology. All of our elders love Facebook, Skype, iPad, etc. cetera. Um, they love spying on their grand grandchildren. It's a really fun activity. Um, and then finally, talking to them about what they want to talk about and doing things with them that they want to do. Uh, it's an interesting to note that about half my customers are living with their adult children. And still, it's difficult for the adult child to spend as much time as they would like doing things that their elderly mother or father wants to do. Uh, and so we really help enable them um, to you know, coexist more peacefully, perhaps. Uh, dementia care is the second thing uh, that we do. And this is really helping provide cognitive simulation, memory care in the home environment, uh, creating a dementia-free environment, uh, dementia-friendly environment, rather, uh, de decluttering uh, uh, the, the space, uh, creating visual aids, calendars, uh, providing respite care for the primary caregiver, as well as helping uh, train and orient the attendant or domestic help who really didn't know what he or she was signing up for. Um, and the, the knowledge and the level of education is fairly low, and so the impact is huge when we come into the household. And finally, we do health monitoring as well. I won't spend time on this. Um, our elder care specialists who deliver the services in the home environment are really what makes us stand apart uh, in India. Uh, they're an exceptional group of people. Uh, all of them have four key soft skills that we look for. Patience, empathy, creativity, and persistence. Uh, for example, uh, I am a horrible elder care specialist because I used to work at McKinsey, and I need to be talking all the time. But when you're working with an elderly person, if nothing is said for you know, five, ten minutes, it's fine. It's, it's everyday life. Um, they all need to have excellent communication in English and the local dialect. They all have prior work experience with elders, mostly in a home setting. They're all well-educated, as you see on the right there. Most of them have master's degrees in psychology um, and other adjacent fields. And uh, we train them internally as well. Uh, to help you understand the unit costs of what makes this a very exciting and profitable business, uh, is, and I have tons of numbers, but I, don't wanna, I, I didn't really know what to share here. Um, but you can ask me whatever you would like. On the, on the left side, so this is Surbhi. She's one of uh, our elder care specialists. On the left side, uh, you see that she has six clients that she visits uh, in and around Delhi. Um, and this is about medium utilization for one of my elder care specialists. The number six can go up to eight or nine. Um, each of them uh, pay us upfront three months in advance. And they pay different amounts depending on how much time we spend with them, the difficulty of care that we provide, and a few other things. Uh, on the right side um, are her costs, our costs, and basically the, the variable costs that we have are her salary, her travel, her technology, um, and her training. And it really gives us about gross margins of, if you assume that this is our unit cost, of 60 plus percent, which is quite good. Um, as of now, Epoch Elder Care has, we're a tiny startup, we have a uh, little over 100 customers in Delhi, Bombay, and Pune. Um, uh, last month, we acquired 25 of them. And uh, we see quite a lot of revenue growth month on month and customer acquisition growth. Our plan is over the next two years to have over 1,000 a, a customers in eight cities. Um, and how are we going to acquire those customers? There are many different channels that we use. But uh, the three most important ones are search engine marketing, NRI initiatives, which is really to grab hold of the non-resident Indian that Katie was talking about, who really feels, uh, who's really at a loss because they're in a different country. And then finally, referrals, as always, is a very big component. And then what really makes this really exciting from a business standpoint for me is that we have a really sticky relationship with our customers, right? I am 
the best friend of my elderly client. She really looks forward to me visiting on a daily basis, and my elder care specialists are the highlight of her day. It's the most fun that she ever has in that day. Um, and my elder care specialist is also the closest trusted advisor to her daughter, who is paying for her services, and who doesn't really know how to take care of someone who's 88 and is beginning to show the signs of dementia. And so I get asked a whole ton of things. Um, and uh, as of now, we only provide intellectual companionship, health monitoring, and dementia care. But the idea is that over time, to really use the distribution channel um, to provide a whole set of services and products that we provide uh, in-house, as well as we help facilitate third-party people to, to provide as well. And that's it for now. Thank you. I was asking if, be, if it's okay to tell a story he told me the other day, which I think really highlights this kind of almost like surrogate local family member that, these, that his staff become for these families. And he was describing this very complex situation that his elder care specialist really manages a bunch of other people. And I think it's interesting, and I think the class aspect is interesting in India that you've mentioned. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, but I think it's really fascinating. Sure. I think uh, what Katie's talking about is um, one of my elder care specialists, her name is Candace. She has a, a customer. She's in, based in Bombay. Um, her customer is uh, a gentleman who lives in San Francisco, actually, and his mother uh, lives in Mumbai alone. Uh, and she's 88 years old, uh, and uh, she has all sorts of health issues, etc., cetera, um, that basically require her to be monitored. So, she, so in the home environment, there is a full-time domestic help who lives with her. There is a part-time a person who comes to help do the cleaning and the cooking, etc. There is uh, a 12-hour nurse um, slash attendant, nurse in a very sort of, not in the way that you would think of a nurse uh, in the US, but slightly lower skilled, um, who comes for 12 hours during the day, and another nurse who comes for 12 hours during the night. There's a physiotherapist that comes twice or three times a week, a doctor who visits once a week, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And our elder care specialist is really the person who enables her customer to live with his family in San Francisco and not run the show uh, in India. And so what we really do is we have a huge account with him, um, like a chunk of money, and we basically pay for everything and coordinate everything and make sure that um, you know, nothing falls through the cracks. And we also uh, make sure that his mom is having a fun and happy life. Thank you, that's a great question. And I would say it's one of the biggest challenges that we have. Um, however, uh, the key here is one of the four soft skills that I mentioned, persistence. Um, and, what our, and this is in our sales strategy. Basically, what we need to do is before we sign up every customer, the elder care specialist comes and sits and spends an hour with the elderly person to understand what their needs are and to see if we are able to fulfill them, but also to build that bond and, you know, in a slow way, get them to accept that, okay, this is a really caring, fun, nice person who I can see myself spending time with um, you know, over the next year or two years, however many years. Um, Sometimes we lose customers because the elderly person is just not, not up for it, right? They may need all sorts of ca uh, care and help, and their children are ready to pay anything, and uh, they just say, get out, I don't want you here. But, more, but that's a very small percentage. What usually happens is that the resistance is broken down over one or two weeks, and as long as I can come into the home over two weeks, uh, you know, nine out of 10 times, we hold on to them. Yeah, great question. Um, so we estimate our lifetime to be about two years. Um, and uh, the, what, we, what we notice is that people who fall off fall off quickly, um, and people who stay with us stay with us until the end of their life probably. Um, very, uh, most, most of the people that fall off fall off for the reason that I mentioned. Um, but even that, uh, again, it's, it's early to tell, but we're very confident that it's two years or more. So we've lost some customers early on because we got the target demographic wrong. So they, it was too expensive for them. Is, is India becoming a um, sort of mobile first nation? So do they have the potential to leapfrog the US and other Western countries in terms of the adoption of mobile technology and the efficiency gains? That yeah, you again, great question. And uh, you know, we're actually working with uh, one or two startups that are in this room right now um, to to take advantage of exactly that. Um, uh, most, most of our uh, family members and so on, well, I, I guess there are two ways of looking at this. Yes, broadly, you're right. However, um, 
our, our target demographic is the higher income. And so from the higher income perspective, it doesn't really matter because they have all the gadgets and mobile or not mobile. But if you're looking at the broader demographic, then absolutely yes. Uh, uh, great question. In fact, in reality, it was the other way around. I do nothing to target NRIs today. It's b because it's really expensive, right? Like cost per click in the US is like 10x what it is in India. There's a lot more competition for keywords. Actually advertising, traditional advertising in the US would cost a lot. Um, and so 27% of my customers are NRIs purely because of word of mouth or they read some article somewhere. Sorry? Oh, uh, uh, NRI is a non-resident Indian, uh, someone who has parents in India but is living somewhere else. Um, so the idea is uh, that now as we go forward, the NRI is certainly a very attractive customer to me um, because their willingness to pay is higher. They understand home health care and they don't need to be uh, convinced about it. And um, they're literally on the other side of the world. And so now we'll start, uh, once you know, we have some more funding power behind us, we'll start looking at attracting them.